All right, good evening, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight, I'm talking about infection autoimmunity part four. Uh, tonight, I'm talking about Proteus mirabilis, which is a urinary bacteria. It's bacteria found in the digestive tract, to my knowledge as well. But it is in the urinary tract of RA patients, so I'm going to be talking about that tonight. Um, just to review, I'm going to bring this in and minimize myself the other way around. Uh, in the first part of the series on rheumatoid arthritis, I talked a lot about the mouth bacteria, Porphyromonas gingivalis, and how this can this bacteria can have an intimate activity with stimulating anti-citrullinated peptide antibody seen in RA patients. Basically, simply, this mouth bacteria triggers the exact antibody seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, they've shown in studies that by improving this mouth bacteria, meaning eradicating it by doing periodontal treatments, that RA disease activity can improve. Um, that has been shown in studies. I'm not saying that is the end-all be-all treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, but it has been demonstrated. <clears throat> the Porphyromonas gingivalis bacteria is the one bacteria known to have what's referred to as the peptidyl arginine deaminases enzyme, which is critically involved in creating these CCP antibodies, which are seen in rheumatoid arthritis. So I did a whole talk on that, and hello to everyone who's joining. Um, I did a whole talk on that, and then I did a talk on Prevotella. Prevotella species are a certain type of bacteria that we see in the gut of RA patients in really high concentrations. Um, in the talk I did on this, I basically discussed how researchers have found that the genetic propensity for RA in part confers uh, basically for RA patients to develop an abundance of Prevotella species, particularly Prevotella corpori, in the gastrointestinal tract. So genetics interplay with the gut microbiome such that we get an overgrowth of these Prevotella species. And then I also talked about Colincella, another type of gut bacteria, and it seems that Prevotella and Colincella seem to stimulate uh, some of the autoimmune processes seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, tonight, I'm talking about Proteus mirabilis. So I'm going to hide this guy, show this in stream. Uh, okay, let me go back to this. Oh, okay, still working with the new software. So relative to this Proteus mirabilis bacteria, let me see here. Okay. Let me go through all these. Okay. So this article is out of the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. Here they're looking at a, a component of this Proteus mirabilis bacteria. Uh, Proteus mirabilis do contain a lipopolysaccharide, which I mentioned in other broadcasts. Lipopolysaccharide are, I think of them as tails of gram-negative bacteria. And here they're saying that this tail of the Proteus mirabilis bacteria may react with collagen type 1. Now, the reason why I am uh, showing you this article is because uh, they see an association with disease activity and collagen autoimmunity. And let me see if I can figure out how to find the right aspect of the article. Let me see. I hope I have. Oh, goodness. I guess it didn't get brought in here. Shoot. When I was downloading everything. Well, my apologies on this, but in essence, they talk about uh, this gentleman named Karl Popper. Karl Popper was an Austrian British uh, philosopher and scientist, and he has what's referred to as the Popper sequences. And basically, this is a way to elucidate the difference between dogma and science. And so it's kind of a way, his postulate, so to speak, uh, validating is there a link between an effect and a disease, for example. The main gentleman researching, 
um, Proteus mirabilis and this association to rheumatoid arthritis. His name is Dr. Ebringer, I believe is the pronunciation. And he has been a, a huge proponent of this association. Now, Dr. Ebringer did studies on rheumatoid arthritis back in the 90s, looking at vegetarian diets. He basically has sequenced this Proteus bacteria and shown that if you look at the DNA of this bacteria and the proteins that are going to be produced by some of the elements of the DNA, he has shown that the DNA in certain spots very much looks like what's referred to as the human leukocyte antigen for rheumatoid arthritis, HLA-DR4. And so uh, that's pretty significant. And he's gone on to show, in essence, that if you uh, take Proteus, or what did he do? He took HLA-DR4 immune cells, I believe, and injected them into mice and saw that all of a sudden they started developing Proteus mirabilis antibodies. And so I'll just go through a few of these. I'm going to read this out of his Autoimmune Revolution article published in 2010. You can go on PubMed and find it. Um, but in essence, he showed that, again, as I mentioned, this HLA sequence is very similar. Um, and it evokes the antibodies to the produce bacteria. The second popper sequence establishes that antibodies to proteus bacteria are present and RA patients from 14 different countries. So he, in essence, established this, I believe, in six different continents, this relationship between antibodies to proteus mirabilis in RA patients, 14 different countries. That's pretty interesting. Um, I think he was conferring with other researchers in these different continents, but he has led the way for this association. Sequence three establishes that antibodies to this bacteria um, are disease specific and basically that no other diseases are associated with these antibodies. Uh, popper sequence four involves high titers of the antibodies of Proteus are found in the urinary cultures. So they've seen a lot of these antibodies to this urinary bacteria in RA patients. Pro, uh, popper sequence five says that Proteus bacteria uh, evoke significantly elevated antibodies in RNA patients. Uh, sequence six says that the shared epitope or molecular mimicry um, is found in the Proteus hemolysin. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Uh, one piece of his work that I disagree with is that I think somewhere within all of these sequences, he states that Proteus mirabilis is the only bacteria to evoke the specific immune reaction seen in rheumatoid arthritis. And as I mentioned, Porphyromonas gingivalis, based on what I'm reading, seems to evoke the same immune reaction as well. So just like all things, um, life is not simplistic. It's very possible that rheumatoid arthritis from an underlying causal element is caused by many different uh, bacteria and potentially viruses. My next talk is going to be on Epstein-Barr. And so we know that there's a link to mouth bacteria, very strong. Uh, we've talked about maybe some associations to gut bacteria. And here we have this Proteus mirabilis urinary bacteria, which also seems to evoke molecular mimicry. It evokes antibodies seen in rheumatoid arthritis. It's been established all over the world. And so that is important. So, uh, Basically, my conclusion, I said that studies linking molecular mimicry to Proteus mirabilis are strong. The one other uh, chink in the armor, so to speak, is that I haven't seen a lot of studies looking at just simply treating Proteus mirabilis from a medical standpoint with improvement in disease activity in RA. If I'm missing those studies, please, one of you, send them to me. I'll be happy to do a talk on it and a retraction. Uh, but as I mentioned, with the Porphyromonas gingivalis, I cited a study where these periodontists did a periodontal treatment and RA disease symptoms improved. Uh, I know throughout Dr. Ebringer's work, he strongly recommends for the early treatment using antibiotics for this Proteus mirabilis bacteria, but I just haven't seen a lot of studies, actually I can't find one, 
where they used antibiotics and RA disease symptoms improved. I've found studies where they use certain diets uh, over, over a year period, uh, beyond a year, if I remember correctly, showing some improvements, certain dietary changes in RA patients, but I haven't seen anything regarding a specific treatment for this bacteria and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So that's what we know. Again, um, I'm going to hide this guy and show here. And again, remember that we have genetics that interplay with rheumatoid arthritis. Those genetics may involve molecular mimicry. Those genetics may predispose an individual to developing immune reactions seen in rheumatoid arthritis. These genetics also may affect what bacteria colonize and dominate the microbiome. We know that smoking is a risk factor for RA. We know that hormones are a risk factor as well. There's a female preponderance, and we know infections can play a role. That's what we've been talking about. And that's pretty much the story. We also know that the specific immune reaction seen with rheumatoid arthritis seems to show up a year or two oftentimes before disease onset. So if we could start testing individuals uh, from a screening standpoint who are maybe at high risk, we might be able to do things to slow this whole process down. So that is it. Uh, I'll be back soon with another broadcast on Epstein-Barr and rheumatoid arthritis. If there are any other components of RA you feel that I've missed, let me know and I'll be happy to go through them. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and I will see you soon.